I think the important thing to know about professional wrestling is that it doesn't owe you anything. You have to give all of yourself if you want to be any kind of successful in this business. You have to give your body, you have to give your mind, you have to give your life to professional wrestling. And that's a lot to ask to somebody. If you give everything to professional wrestling, at some point, it's going to give back. I mean, the story begins before I can even remember. My dad, his sport was professional wrestling. Since I can remember, it was jumping off the couch and elbowing my dad was like, that was our sport, that was our thing. I think it was always in my mind to want to do that, to pursue that someday. That dream kind of faded as I got older. We met through, we both had friends that were dating and I went to Disney World with my girlfriend who came out from Colorado and like on the way there she was like, by the way I have a secret boyfriend and he's like gonna be at Disneyland. But he called Nate and so he had a pass and said that there's a girl at Disneyland that needs someone to hold her hand. So then he showed up. That same friend actually ended up marrying us later on. He was very big, very tall really quiet. I had to make the first move. Nate was working 60 to 80 hours a week and we were newly dating so we were trying to figure out like a life, relationship, work balance. He had a friend that did wrestling training and he was like, I'd really like to do this. Like, I'd really like to try it. Nate, you know, when he first came in, he wasn't just another student. Like you saw almost immediately from the first couple times he came into training, he was a natural born leader. Um, he was an encourager. I just always had more of a creative mind. So I was always looking for something else. I would join bands. Uh, I would do other artistic expression of some sort. And then Colin met a professional wrestler named Augie Loya, and I saw photos of him rolling around in the ring, and I was like, how do I do it? The, that Monday, I signed up for wrestling school. Professional wrestling training is unlike anything else. It is so physically demanding, plus you also have to be creative. You have to learn all of that, plus you have to learn how to be an actor, and you have to learn how to turn on your charisma and like be bigger than life. You know, you're training to go as hard as you can for an extended amount of time. Um, I run Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy um, out here in Bell Gardens, California, which is like East LA. Instead of me complaining, hey, everybody coming out is, is terrible and I hate the way all the new guys are and they have no respect, I try to do something about it and I created the wrestling school. So a lot of people started following us through Google and social media, MySpace and, and Facebook and stuff like that. And Brody King found us. And uh, man, I, I gotta be honest, it, like Colin and Brody probably trained for like one or two sessions. And then Brody like just caught that bug and was like, this is what I want to do. Uh, Brody is my best friend. I'm his, I was his best man. Uh, he's my bandmate. I, the, I hailed his son the day he was born. He farted in my arms. By way of me failing to make it work, he made it work. He did it the right way. He came and he started from the beginning, did the full beginner's course, where you don't step foot in the ring until you know the very basics. When I started wrestling training, I had a full-time job, uh, working 55 to 60 hours plus a week. Those first few years in wrestling were brutal. We've definitely had our fair share of like fights, like when he was working for the studios, doing lighting, working 60 hour weeks, and then training every day for two hours after work and being gone Friday through Sunday on the indies. 
feel like mentally for a lot of people that would probably break them after a little bit. And then it was like, okay, now I'm going four times a week and then I'm wrestling on the weekends. That's a lot of time away from home. That's a lot of time away from your friends, but I was obsessed. I like to think that I fit into, uh, into Nate's story as uh, a tag team partner and a friend. I was here on, I believe, on his first day of actual training. Uh, I remember because he walked in and doing this and this. So he already had a look. He was already a big dude. I met good old Nate. He was kind of, he had that, you know, bright eyed look like, wow, is that a ring? And I didn't know anything. I was just like, yeah, let's see if this guy makes it. You know, because it's like sometimes the big guys are the, the gentle giants and they have no pain tolerance, no ability to control their bodies. But Nate kind of came in, he's like, all right, let me see. And he started getting in the ring. And I'll tell you now, like that guy could fucking move like, like nothing. My now wife at the time, she was like, I need time. And I told her, if in five years I'm not successful at professional wrestling, I'll quit. I'll walk away from it forever. Man, he would, Brody would live here at the, at the dojo. He'd park in that little parking lot right outside and he would sleep in his car until we would come and unlock the doors. He would dedicate himself here and just try to be here as much as he can. What makes the students here is like, we, we, we'll really train you everything you need to know, but there's some students that just don't make it. The ones that do are the ones like Brody. To become a wrestler, they had to be so dedicated, man. If you are not dedicated, it's not going to work out. Uh, you really, truly have to be there because you want to. You got to want to put in the work and have the physical capability of putting in the work. You know, I've wrestled with a broken hand. I've wrestled with a broken leg. Uh, I've wrestled with a broken jaw. For me, I wanted, I wanted to be the best professional wrestler I could be. Uh, I look at this like it's a craft. He's wrestled with broken jaws, torn ACLs. He sang sets with broken jaws, just like <laughs> not opening his teeth. So yeah, he's a sick fuck. He's gonna be doing it till the wheels literally fall off or are torn off. If he sticks with something, he's gonna be successful at it. It was definitely clear to me, at least, that he'd be successful. I, it would not have happened was, was he not so passionate about it and, uh, and, and driven to, to just be great and make it work. To me, it was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Fuck, I'm done. Uh, and for him, it was like, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, this is what I want to do forever. I feel like the, the normal professional wrestler, when they wake up, like if a normal person woke up in our body, they'd probably wake up screaming. I feel like you just kind of bury a lot of it back in the back of your head and you just go, I hope this goes away in a couple days. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You know, some of the greatest minds of professional wrestling went from being a wrestler to being a manager to being a booker to being a producer. I do feel that wrestling is sustainable even if your body isn't willing to keep going. Um, you just have to learn all aspects of it. You've got to be a crazy kind of stupid to be in this business. You, you have to be. I mean, I've had my teeth knocked out. Um, these ones are fake. Three broken ribs, broken foot, broken jaw. Countless black eyes to where I go to Starbucks to get a goddamn Frappuccino and the girl, she's like, here, honey, you should leave him. And I'm like, bitch. I'm like, know the backstory before you judge. I don't have uh, a bad knee. I have a bad knee and a worse knee. Uh, sometimes for a week or two at a time, my right knee would be about softball size, a lot of fluid, I could like poke it, bad shoulders, bad back. Like you're, you're literally grinding your body to dust and powder for the most part. It's, you take your bumps, you take your bruises, and you get up and you go to work either later that day or the next day or however it worked out. You wrestle long enough that you can start a podcast about how long you wrestled. And there's going to be a built-in audience of people that hear, want to hear you talk about it. You wrestle long enough, you can produce wrestling. You can train people to wrestle. There's, there's avenues that you can do. It's not going to last forever. Does any sport, if a guy has to retire because he's injured, the fans are going to make sure he's okay. They're going to support whatever it is they do. It's a, it's a crazy, passionate audience. Wrestling is not just hard uh, physically, but it's hard mentally, it's hard emotionally. 
But how could you complain about this is what your life is? Because if, if it wasn't this, I'd be working at a warehouse probably. I get to, I don't have to, I get to mentor these these young minds, you know, and they, they can become Brody King, you know, and that's even greater just, just to watch them on television. Like, yeah, that guy, you know? I got to where I am now just because I was too dumb to quit. I kept showing up. I'll tell kids that if, I, if I'm helping coach a class, if I'm coaching a class, like the only difference between you and me is reps. It's, I've just been doing this a lot longer than you have. To the point uh, where one of the first times I talked to my mom after I got the job, she said, and I quote, congratulations, son, you did this in spite of us. Wrestling professionally has taught me patience, that nothing is handed to you. You have to earn it. You have to work hard for it, and you have to sacrifice for it. Or if we're in Japan, you go. <laughs> Indie wrestling shows, like other than like off-Broadway theatrical productions, it's the, it's the last great theater in the world. Anybody can go to a wrestling show and have a great time. There's literally something for everybody. People are getting hit with chairs. People are getting set on fire. Women are like doing some of the craziest shit you've ever seen in the night. Going into to a professional wrestling show for the first time is unlike anything else. It's got a little bit of everything. Great professional wrestling will make a fan out of anybody. You want to bend reality for them. Maybe they're going to a job that they hate or maybe that they're in a bad relationship or whatever. When you entertain them for that three hours that they're in that independent show. They want to sit there with their kid or they want to sit there with their beer and, and have a great time. Being able to do this weird fucking combination of stunt work and acting and storytelling in nine out of 10 times you're live live. So if something goes sideways or something happens and you decide to follow that path, that's a choice you made. You're out there flying by the seat of your pants and when that works out well, when you tell the right story, with the right physicality, with the right person in front of the right crowd, there is not a better feeling that I've experienced. Period. Some, for some folks, it's right as they break the curtain, as their music hits. For some folks, it's not till they're in the ring. And you can kind of look around at everyone and you have a feeling that you may not be the reason that all of these people showed up. You're part of the reason. It's like the peak like when your adrenaline dumps, I think we've probably all been there in some way. When you're doing something that you're really excited about, that you really enjoy, and you get to the, like that, oh man, this is it. But if you can do something and they will organically, if the people organically respond in a way that sometimes maybe you didn't even plan, it's the best feeling. The things that I love about professional wrestling, I don't even know if they can be put into words. The physicality, the emotions that can that you can emit from the crowd from a complete stranger you know like you see these big returns from people and people are crying in the crowd they are emotionally involved to the highest level that's uh that's something unique everyone knows that wrestling is predetermined or fake but everyone still buys into it everyone still loves it there's a reason why these guys leave an impact on people for the rest of their lives. And it's not because it's a hokey thing that you liked when you were a kid, it's because it's something special. And that's what I love about professional wrestling. For somebody like me who comes from a, a music genre of inherent violence, it's the same thing in wrestling. You know, if you're sitting right here, there's a chance without warning, they're gonna come flying over straight into you. And it's, that's part of the magic. There's a lot of similarities between hardcore and wrestling. Selling yourself uh, as a product is, you know, from being in a band and making merch and creating music to, you know, making merch and creating a match. Like, they're very similar. In music you want, especially in hardcore music, you want that aggression or you want that release. And in wrestling, you want that same thing. There's this like raw feeling at like a, an independent wrestling show that you can't get anywhere else. You gotta watch out for people diving. You gotta watch out for people's arms swinging. And that's what we're used to in hardcore shows. I wanna be in the shit. I wanna be 
getting swung at, getting dived at. I want to be able to, you know, get up on stage and do whatever they're doing. It's honestly kind of insane how long it took for there to be this kind of widespread hardcore wrestling connection. Like both are inherently violent and theatrical. So it, it, it's really cool to be part of, the, you know, in some my own little way via him, this hardcore wrestling renaissance now where every major company has some kind of hardcore representation in it. Right before he started wrestling, we started our band, and the two have benefited each other. People know the band because of his wrestling. I think people know his wrestling because of the band, and that's just been that's been great for me. Just him telling me about his early training days and just hearing about the shit he was doing, how blown away all the teachers and stuff were, it was not a surprise to me because he's fast. Like going to hardcore shows and stuff. He was jumping off people's shoulders, back flipping, front flipping into crowds as long as I had known him. So I was like, yeah, you're, this is perfect for you. It's sort of like a live action comic book sometimes, I feel, or like violent dinner theater in a way because it has dramatic elements, but they're definitely action elements. Unless you're on like at maybe the worst show ever, you're probably gonna see at least one thing where you're like, uh-oh. Or you like pull your friend aside after and say, hey, how did they, like I know, but how did that happen? How did they do that and not die? I, I feel the show should offer you, you some variety too. It's like the circus, in a way. We want it to offer a little bit of something to everyone. So, if you don't like the women's match, then maybe you'll like the light heavyweight match. If you don't like the light heavyweight match, maybe the tag match will be what you're looking for. Maybe it's the, uh, maybe it's the heavyweights that are in the main event. Maybe it's the scramble match that opened the show. Wrestling is a true storytelling art form. Getting your professional wrestling name is like the hardest thing in the world. A lot of times your trainer will give it to you. I don't play by the rules, so I was gonna pick my own name no matter what. I wasn't gonna let somebody else name me, but I needed help. Bruiser Brody was a wrestler from the 70s and the 80s, um, infamously killed in Puerto Rico, but he's also one of the most influential wrestlers of all time and like his style and his look and everything were really ahead of its time. Brody was a great name, it came from a great background and I feel like that that would give me even more reason to push harder to be a better professional wrestler. King I think I gave him, I don't know if he remembers that, but I think I came up with Maximus King, <laughs> like just kind of like a gladiator thing. And I think it was Joey who was like, Maximus is fucking stupid, do something else. And then Brody, I think, came from a combination of Bruiser Brody and, and Brody Lee, RIP, to both of them. I had nothing to do with that one. But King, I gave him. To see the guy he's transitioned from, from being this just like, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want type of guy. I remember he tried to tell us what his name was going to be in wrestling, and I think it was like Maximus king or something like that and we were just like no nah, dude come on it pissed him off like he was just like what the fuck what do you mean you're going to tell me what my name's going to be and we were just like no dude we're just guiding you we're guiding you because it's like you don't want to piss off brody he's a big guy but to see the guy he's become now and I've, I've seen him propose to his wife he's married his wife they've got these two beautiful babies and just to see the man he's become and just see how successful he's come he never let it get to him he never let fame get to him he never got that conceit, that arrogance. This is three days before Christmas. I had emergency jaw surgery the next day. They put a plate in my mouth. Uh, I don't have any teeth on this side of my mouth, on the bottom jaw. I have no feeling in the bottom side of my jaw. Uh, and then I drank a prime rib through a straw. And this is right when I got signed to a professional wrestling company. Uh, the doctor told me that I would not wrestle for six months. I wrestled the next weekend in a cage match and, I and in a hardcore match. And then I went back to Ring of Honor and wrestled for an entire month with my jaw wired shut, which sucked ass. I could have been like, yeah, I'm not gonna wrestle for six months, but a lot happens in six months. Specifically then, I would have missed my chance of wrestling in Madison Square Garden. I would have missed going to Australia. I would have missed, you know, the form formidable time of making Brody King a star in Ring of Honor. In my mind, which might be a little warped, the sacrifice of me wrestling with a broken jaw and potentially never having feeling in my face again was worth it. My dad being able to go 
back to his job and tell his friends that his son wrestled at Madison Square Garden. They didn't get it, but now they do. Now they hear, oh damn, Brody King's wrestling at Madison Square Garden. Oh, I remember Nate when he was just pulling cable. And for my dad to be able to say that, that's my wealth in professional wrestling. I think I felt a lot of things. I was super proud of him. I was like, it felt like really validating. Like I know, especially for him, like a lot of people he worked with were probably, were like, oh yeah, how's that like wrestling thing going? Like, oh yeah, I'm still doing that wrestling thing. And I think for him to be able to be like, yeah, I wrestled at Madison Square Garden. Like, that's like a pretty big, like, fuck you to like everyone that's doubted him. This guy goes and wrestles at Madison Square Garden. It's a packed arena. I mean, it was like, I remember I was talking to his mom and we were just both like, holy shit, he's gonna do it, he's gonna do it. And he makes sure to have time to call me up and he's like, takes a picture of it. I think his name was in, it was on the screen and everything. And he's like, we're doing it, Papa. That was his quote, we're doing it, Papa. And I said, I remember really quick saying right back, no man, you're doing it. It's like, we're, we're your proud wrestling prince and we're sitting here, tears in our eyes, fucking like, fuck yeah. Cause he was, he's like our first great success and he never let it get to his head. He just, he stayed so humble and it's like, you know, we want to be like sitting there touting and being like, yeah, that's one of our boys, you know, that's our kid. It's like, we look at him and we can't get like that because he's not like that. I remember I, on his wedding day, his mom and dad came up to my husband and Joey and I and his mom was in tears and she was just like, Thank you so much. He was giving us attitude. He didn't know what direction he wanted. She actually grabs my face like this. She brings it close and she just gives me this hug. She's got tears in her eyes. And she just tells me like, I don't know where Nate would be without you. She just was like in tears and telling us that, you know, the man he's become it because of you and Joey. She goes, I, I, I can't thank you guys enough. Then finally, like his father comes up and it's the same thing and the light bulb goes off in my head and I said, wow, like, I thought we taught wrestling. I told my wife, we don't teach wrestling. She said, what do you do? I said, we change lives. Like, really, and it's, I, I tell people this and it sounds so corny, like, we change lives, we really do. And I don't know what I'm instilling into them, but yeah, that really blew me away and Brody's parents taught me that. Wrestling accepts you, no matter what size, what shape, what you look like, your age or anything. It was like the land of misfit toys, and I felt like I finally found a place to belong. In the ring, it was like I was able to be this total healed bitch and get everyone to hate me, and I fucking loved it. Uh, wrestling is beautiful and stupid and painful and rewarding. On a level that I uh, legitimately have a difficult time finding a parallel for, I think, I think that's probably, probably you'll find will be true for most people. Other performers, people in bands or comedians. They understand what it is to pour your heart and your soul into the thing that you're doing for the time period that you're up there. And when it pays off the way that you need it to or want it to, legitimately I can't think of anything better. My aspirations in professional wrestling is, just, is to just keep learning, to keep growing and to keep bettering myself as a performer and as a professional wrestler. I just want to make Brody King better. I told someone fairly early on, as long as something doesn't go sideways, if he could keep from getting hurt, he was definitely going to be something, somebody. And uh, I'm not right very often, but uh, I like to feel that I'm right there. I think Brody, he has that type of career where he's not gonna wait for an opportunity to come. He's gonna be able to choose where he wants to go. Um, I don't wanna see him staying at one place too long because there's endless possibilities for him. Wherever he goes, he's gonna bring the best match, the best wrestler, the best attitude, the best professional guy in the world. So I think anywhere he goes, they're gonna love him. Um, I like to just see him doing what he's doing now, just loving it, enjoying it, but also still putting his family priority and having the opportunities to be able to do that. As like corny as it sounds, like it's never too late to achieve your dreams. I mean, he was 27 when he started wrestling, being almost a decade older than like what a lot of stars start off at as and still being successful at it. Like I think is a testament that if anyone has like a passion and drive and like works hard that they can achieve their dreams. 
we haven't even even really touched the surface of what Brody King's gonna do in professional wrestling. So the sacrifice that I made in the beginning paid off in full now. Like 